Hello and welcome back to Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that Primer has powerful tools to replace parts in one model with those in another? Today I'm going to show you how. So I've got a Honda Accord model open and this is going to be our target model. And first of all I'm going to show you how you can replace some parts. So I've created a second model. I'll just turn that on here, invisible. So this is um, the doors and some of the side panels. And then just so that you can see that the replace has occurred, I've added some swages using the meshing swages tool. Um, and you'll see those updates. I've also updated the materials of these parts. So we have a little look. I've changed them to some aluminium just for the sake of having some changes. And then also um, um, with the back part, I've um, given it a new name. And I've also changed the thickness of this one to one one millimeter. So when we go to the replace tool, um, you can access that by clicking on part and replace. You'll see three options available to you. So there's replace single target part, that's just one part at a time. Or you can replace multiple, which is um, quicker if you're doing lots of parts, but you need to make sure that the IDs are matching. So the part IDs are the same in both the target and source model. The, tar the target model is the model that is going to have the parts replaced in and the source model is the model which contains the parts that you want um, to be added in. So those are the modified and new parts that you need. So um, these first two options, replace single and multiple, um, have some sub options and they're, they're the same for all of them. So you can tweak how the replace is going to um, happen. So you can change the renumbering options. By default, it will just go to the highest uh, node and element numbers uh, when a clash occurs. Um, you can also change some of the connection options. So I'll just drag this a bit bigger, just so you can see. Um, so we have um, options for um, what happens when the connections fail. Um, and then you can change how the uh, mass is assigned. So if the part that is being replaced had some added mass, then you can get it to recalculate that or just ignore it or give you any warnings. Um, and then you've got some reattach options. Um, so this is uh, asking if it wants to remake connections or you can um, see that if you had um, shells coating your solids for, for whatever reason, so you might have some shell loading, um, then you can actually get the um, old shells to be deleted and the new shells to be imported. And that's really um, useful if you've changed the mesh uh, in these parts, which uh, will be the case here because the swages have changed the mesh locally. Um, but I don't have any shells coating these um, because these parts are, sh are shells, not solids. Um, and then you can also set some options um, for how it re uh, reforms sets um, so if the parts go into uh, the same set that the target part used to be in um, and then transfer options and this is um, probably the one you might want to use um, or have a look at before you you perform the operation most so this is really um, asking you whether you want to transfer the section of material and hourglass etc pro properties across so if you leave these unticked then what's going to happen is only the geometry is going to be replaced and not the section or the material. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to click these because I've modified them and I want them to be carried across. Um, and also hourglassing, although I haven't set that um, different. Um, also this part title one. Um, so the part titles um, are the same at the moment, but if I click that, then they would, um, if they differed, they would be transferred across with their different part titles. So I'm just actually going to do that. I'm going to change the name of this one. I'm just going to say replaced and then update that. Okay, so now I can go to the tool. So I click on replace and then I'm just going to start off with the um, one um, part replace option. So first it asks me to select target parts. So for this, I'll go um, back to the model option, make only the target model visible. It's a bit easier to do that. Go back to parts and then I can just pick the part. So I'm going to pick this front door um, panel and then I'm going to 
uh, click next and it will only let me select one part because I'm using the single target part option. So this is useful if the IDs uh, differ, but in this case they are actually the same. So then I'll select the same one, the front door here, click apply, and then it's just going to perform some calculations, look at the contacts, etc. And when that's finished, um, we'll be able to generate a view which can see how re uh, merging occurs. So you can see straight away actually that the part has been replaced there. You can see the swage that I made has been added. And then if we click on generate view here, it's just going to give us a smaller view just showing really where we have the unattached nodes and whether we want to reform those connections here. Um, so you can actually tweak around with these. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to want to leave them all um, alone. But um, if I wanted to exclude some, maybe some down this side, I could pick slave nodes to exclude. And then I could just highlight all of these down this side, click apply and you'll see that now they've been removed. If I want to bring them back, then I can click on consider all attachable nodes again. And then I can just click on reattach, merge blue and green. In this case, um, I've got an input tolerance of zero, so it will be only the coincident ones that will be merged. And as it happens, because it was the same original part, they're exactly in the same position. So this should happen, no bother. So there we go, part replace completed successfully. I'm now going to show you just the multiple one quickly. Um, so if I press, press U to unblank everything, K just to turn back to the original view, and then I can go replace multiple parts um, matched by ID. So I'll click, select the target model, and then I'll select the parts that I want. In this case, I've already placed the green door, so I'll just select, um, click on part here and select the back door and the, these two side panels. Um, and then I'll click apply, wait for that to complete. So there we go, it's completed. Um, and it's telling me that I have 823 nodes that may be, need to be reattached. So I can have a little look at that. Um, I can see the unattached and uh, the unattached items or um, I tend to just click um, either show blobs, which is just um, in the context of the whole model, you can see the blue and the green um, nodes. So um, that's where the mergers will occur. Or if you want to just have a simplified view, um, perhaps um, getting rid of everything, then you can click on the generate view button. Uh, in this case, I know I'm going to be happy with this. So I'll just um, click reattach and wait for that to finish. And here it's got some errors occurring. So in this case, um, those errors um, have occurred and it's telling me connection is too close to another. Um, some panels in the wells are too close together. So when you do this, all of these are going to be put into your um, connection table uh, and you can see what their status is and fix them, update and remake. So you could try doing that and if that doesn't work, then you can go through them um, individually and just um, check. Um, you can also just um, change your options um, and fix your connections. Um, so one of the reasons is that maybe my uh, changing the thickness, um, it didn't like that, um, but it's good to have the options of it really showing you um, even and when and where stuff fails so that you can address it. Uh, so now we're just gonna have a little look and see if my materials did transfer across. So in this case, yes, you can see I now have uh, aluminium um, in this model and it's um, uh, transferred across. And then let's have a look at the section as well. Yes, so this is one, one millimeter thick. So that's because I, um, within the part replace options, um, I selected um, transfer section and material. So far we've looked at replacing one-to-one uh, -one mapping of parts. And what if you have more parts that you want to replace with a subset of parts? So that's when assembly replace is useful. And this um, diagram just shows you um, how it kind of works. So the blue parts in the middle uh, are those that are being replaced by the uh, group of red parts. And we see that there are more parts in the new assembly 
um, but they fit in uh, and are reconnected uh, with the old spot welds in this case. Um, so that's assembly replace, and I'm going to show you how that works just now. For this final part, I've opened up a new model and I'm going to show you the assembly replace options uh, within part replace. So um, first of all, I'm going to go to the part tree and uh, click on assemblies. And then you can see that there are these various assemblies uh, created. Um, and this is essentially groupings of parts, um, which is really useful, um, particularly for the part replace tool. So here I've got these parts to replace, which I'm just going to sketch. You can see in the uh, front right, um, uh, we've got these parts to replace in the car. And then if I just turn off the demo model, um, you can see that we have these new parts as well uh, to replace. So um, same as we've done previously, we go to part uh, replace. And I'm just going to um, turn um, on the demo model um, and we go to uh, replace part assembly. And this time we have some various options for um, the connections. Um, so this is particularly useful if you have spot wells and other things that you um, are trying to keep track of and, and they might have changed um, with those parts. Um, so you might have more parts than you used to have, but the, the extremities are, are the same. So you want to reform those connections. So you can choose to keep none, external, keep all. Um, and I'd encourage you, if you're doing an operation like this, to play around with them. Um, save the model, of course, beforehand, just um, so that um, if you make any mistakes, you can revert um, easily, um, but and there's powerful options here as well as um, importing source materials and uh, sections, um, hourglassing, um, etc. And um, you can also um, ask it to retain those properties from the target part. Um, so you can just replace the target um, geometry, but not the material or section stuff as if or, or you can toggle these on and off. Um, and um, if you toggle these off, then it doesn't import the part, but it uses the um, ID um, uh, of the uh, source material. So maybe you have that material already existing in the target model. And so you just want it um, to use that new ID rather than importing another duplicate of that material. Okay, um, so first of all, I'm gonna select the target model. Um, so it's asking me to do that here. So I'll select the demo model here. And then it says select target parts. So in this case, I'm going to um, select the part tree assembly. And then uh, helpfully, we've got it named parts to replace. You can see in the front there. So select that, click on apply. And now I need to select the source model. Um, and this source model is um, basically only the parts that need to be replaced. So it's uh, essentially a slimmed down version of the model and that's how this uh, works so it assumes that every part in the in the source model is um to replace the assembly so I click apply and this will take a little bit of time to complete um it's showing me um that uh, there's some connections that i um should delete um and some nodes as well so i'll just delete those uh, and i'll continue the operation um so it's also told me i've had some relabeling occur um, so I can show the blobs here, um, and then this is when generate view is quite useful. So I'll generate the view, and you can see um, the uh, connections here. Um, and perhaps if I um, look maybe at this part, and then um, here, and turn the mesh on by pressing Y, you can see that the shape of this hole has changed. Um, and so it used to have these blue nodes, and now it's um, got these green nodes. And so that nodal rigid body will need to uh, be updated. So when I press um, reattach and merge, um, you'll see that that was updated uh, along with other connections. And again, it's showing me anywhere where there was an error, which I can address. Um, so in this case, I can sketch that. Um, and I see up here, there is a connection that couldn't be reformed. So I can address that um, using any of the action options here. Um, and um, yeah, so all of the connections and any errors that occur um, will be displayed here. So that's the um, part replace tool. And um, it's yeah really powerful if you have to modify just a, um, a small bit of a model or change the mesh or um, tweak around. Um, it's powerful because it keeps 
uh, track of the connections and how things fit together in the model and uh, you can also um, carry across updated models and uh, materials and sections uh, into your new model. So I hope you found that useful and we'll see you at the next top tips.